Uh, we will now uh, move to our next combined speaker. Uh, Dr. Lubomir Litwinchuk uh, will present the combination of submet retinal administration of fluid and inverted eye lamp lab technique as an alternative approach. Please. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I would like to thank you for this kind invitation to participate in this SOE webinar. Thank you, Professor Binder. My name is Dr. Litwinchuk, and I'm talking from Germany, from Gießen. And I would like to focus my talk on the application of an alternative technique, a surgical technique to treat the most difficult uh, cases of macular holes. These are chronic, persistent, and large. The intraoperative OCT data showed that uh, during the conventional ELM flap peeling to treat uh, macular holes, we create a strong traction on the retina and this strong traction is shown over here and this strong traction can, can even uh, increase the base size of the retinal macular hole during the surgery. In contrast to uh, conventional technique, inverted ELM technique um, is meant to remove, to peel the ELM in centripetal manner and to, together with a, a retinal massage, macular massage, we can even decrease the uh, macular hole base size at the end of the surgery. And this technique was first proposed by uh, Michalewska in Navrotsky in 2010. And this brilliant technique opened a new horizon to treat difficult, difficult cases with macular hole, difficult challenging cases. The second technique I would like to talk to about is a subretinal application of fluid. Uh, I was introduced to this technique a few years ago by my friend, colleague from Kyiv, Dr. Ruban, and he applied this technique uh, by patients with a traumatic, post-traumatic macular holes with a sub-retinal scarring. And uh, the closure rate with this technique in these difficult cases was, uh, we, we reported was 85.7%. Um, and in cases where we couldn't reach the complete closure of the macular hole, we, we could reach the, the the decrease of the macular hole size. And there were almost all holes were closed. Uh, Professor Carsten Meyer on the larger series of uh, cases demonstrated also the efficacy of this technique and the closure rate was similar, 85.3%. And since then, this technique was first uh, described by uh, Oliver and Wojcik in 2011. And then, since then, uh, there are many uh, kinds, uh, there are many variants of this technique and many, many publications of this technique. And finally, we came up with, a, with an idea to combine these two novel techniques to treat the most difficult um, uh, cases with the persistent chronic or the large macular holes. In this case, you, you see the schematic view of the temporal inverted ELM flap in order to spare the nasal ELM and in order to inject, be able to inject on a st without stress, we remove the small areas of the ELM nasally to the macular hole, and we create four bubbles. And in this case, this is a schematic view of combination of two techniques, subretinal fluid administration and uh, inverted ELM flap. In our case series, we used uh, either inverted ELM flap technique, temporal flap, or free flap, free ELM flap technique. Interoperative OCT uh, can be helpful to uh, to um, to control the position of ELM flap at the end of the surgery. But you see, this is a case of chronic macular hole, at 14 months, female, 54 year old. We created as well the temporal flap and we removed the small tiny areas of ELM nasally to, to the macular hole in order to inject BSS without the stress to the RPE. We injected uh, the BSS under the, underneath the retina and sometimes we can see the leakage of the BSS through the macular hole. It means that the rims, the edges of the macular hole are, uh, have been elevated. So, and this surgery ends up with a fluid air exchange and uh, usually with a gas endotamponate and a face down position of the patient uh, through one night. 
to the next day after the surgery. The closure rate uh, was also uh, very high in our case series, almost 100%. I will talk about this a little bit later. In this case, the macular hole was closed primarily due to reapproximation of the macular hole edges. And additionally, the ELM flap covered the macular hole. <clears throat> in these three cases from our case series, you can see a different mechanism of the closure of the macular hole. Here, the primarily closure due to reapproximation. In this case, uh, due to the ELM flap, uh, it was not possible to reapproximate the, the macular hole rims with a subretinal injection. And in the, this case, also with reap, the primarily, the rims were reapproximated and the macular uh, ELM flap uh, supported the closure of the macular hole. We can follow even the reorganization of the normal retinal structures or retinal layers in the fovea within six months. This is case of chronic macular hole. And you see uh, at the beginning, postoperatively, a tiny reapproximation of the edges with the ELM bridge. And then in three months, we see how the, in six months, we see how the inner and outer, you know, first of all, outer layers of the retina, they reorganize itself and the close fills, uh, the, 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 the macular hole fills up with the tissue. And the subretinal fluid appeared to cause hyperreflex, hyperreflective areas in an outer fluorescence, but you, you can see that these areas, they, these appearances, they disappear within six months. These are the results of our case series and the best corrected visual acuity increased. All holes, the final uh, macular hole closure rate was 100%, except one case when, where the second surgery due to the rheumatogenous retinal detachment was necessary. And as a discussion, I would like to present this case uh, from Dr. Ruban. He treated a post-traumatic macular hole quite large, almost 2000 micrometers, young male person. And uh, uh, he, the surgeon injected subretinally the subretinal, the BSS, and then uh, he performed a slight massaging of the retina. The ELM was stained and the inverted ELM flap was created in order to cover already smaller in size macular hole after the um, subretinal injection and massaging of the macula. At the end of the surgery, the macula hole was closed with inverted ELM flap, as you can see here. But unfortunately, the patient presented in one week after the surgery with a rigmatogenous retinal detachment caused by the peripheral hole. But OCT showed us that ELM flap was still adherent to the macula hole partially. And uh, the second surgery was necessary. And here you see the small peripheral macular hole was already with PVR formation. And in that case, the surgeon was ought to uh, use a free flap technique to remove the ELM from the sides and under the peripheral decaline to place the ELM um, remnants of the ELM onto the macular hole to reassure the closure of macular hole. And this surgery was, uh, uh, was ended with a silicone oil endotamponate. So as you see, even uh, th this case uh, um, proves the stability of ELM flap after ELM, inverted ELM flap technique, the ELM flap sticks to the macular hole edges and uh, remains adher adherent even if the retinal detaches. Another thing is the retinal displacement. The subretinal injection of BSS allows us to displace centripetally the retina toward the center of the macular hole. And through this mobility of the retina, we can achieve, we can support the closure of the difficult and large macular holes. There are some difficulties in this technique. Sure, our aim is to detach the macular hole and the retinal in the area of macular hole, but it is not always uh, possible and not in every place. It's, and we noticed as well as uh, Professor Meyer described the strong adhesions between the RPE and macular 
uh, whole edges, which we also presented as a short abstract on ARWA 2020. To conclude, I would like to say that surgical treatment of chronic persistent the large macular holes remains still very difficult and the surgical techniques um, and indications are not very clear. And that's why we came up with an idea to combine one of the, the very efficient techniques, novel techniques, inverted ELM flap technique. Either this, this is inverted ELM flap or temporal flap or free flap with subretinal fluid application. And in our case series, the final closure rate was 100%. Uh, this is small uh, series of case uh, series of cases. Uh, the study should be done on the largest series of cases. But we believe that the synergy of two anatomical impacts of these two techniques, namely the centripetal mobilization of the retina toward the center of the macular hole, and proliferation of the glial cells underneath the ELM flap, can cover the failure rates of each other of each of these two techniques and bring the closure rate to almost nearly to 100%. Uh, we need probably also a clear, more clear definition of the macular hole or as a classification as we talk about this segment of the macular hole, which is which are very difficult to close with the conventional techniques. Thank you for your attention. And I would like to uh, acknowledge my co-authors. This is Dr. Ruben, Professor Meyer, Professor Stiege, Professor Grzybowski, and Professor Richard. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, Lubomir, for this very interesting presentation. Um, I have two questions to my presentations. <laughs> can you read them or shall I read them? No, no, no. I have a, a, another two questions. The, the one question is, uh, sure, I, I, I learned something from Professor Meyer that Oliver and Wojcik were not the first who, who described this technique. <laughs> it was interesting to, to, to hear this. And the second technique, uh, and the second uh, comment that I would like to say that uh, this was the question to uh, Professor Navrotska that this covering and staffing this of the uh, macular hole these are two different things and we already discussed this today and uh, earlier with the with the, with the due to our publication and letter to the editor and for sure it it should be uh, uh, it shouldn't be uh, applied probably but i think there are some cases rare cases difficult cases what when we at the end of the surgery cannot control the covering of the macular hole due to different uh, causes, due to different problems, bad visualization, I don't know, displacement of the, the air fluid exchange or another. So, and uh, it, in this case, uh, probably this is the, 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 the best case scenario from worst case scenario so when the, the the flap is inside it is better than the flap is out of the macular hole and there are two questions from the audience to us and would you please ask these questions Susanna? okay uh there is a question from dr singh in what situations do you use a free flap and how do you get the free flap to stay over the hole and not move around during the gas exchange okay this quite difficult, quite difficult uh, step. In cases where the ELM is already removed and you don't have any ELM around the macular hole, you have to stain the ELM outside the macular area. And uh, if you are lucky, the surgeon previously did remove a small amount of ELM. And if you are not, the surgeon on the first surgery remo have removed, has removed the, the area, big area and uh, this is my um, impression, but uh, the further we go from the macula, from the fovea, the uh, diff more difficult is to remove the ELM. The ELM is more thinner and the, the, the removal of the ELM is not so easy, but still you can find some ELM near the optic disc. You can go even uh, on the 12 o'clock or, or six or even nasally from the uh, optic disc or, or temporally, but you have to 
color it to dye it with the membrane blue and find it and under the usually I do this under the PFCL and uh, during the gas fluid gas exchange air gas exchange this is uh, also all, uh, quite a difficult but you leave the PFCL inside the eye and you remove only the fluid first and then you you have only air and PFCL in the eye and then the air air will press the CLM free flap to the retina and gently remove the PFCL at the end. Thank you. We have a second question, very quick. Uh, what kind of instrument do you use for subretinal injection of BSF? Thank you. These are standard subretinal injection. They, they are 23 gauge and 25 gauge, but inside these uh, needles, the injection needles, there is a retractable uh, 41 gauge needle and some some uh, companies they write 38 or 41 actually this is the same needle from uh, polyuretan but um, this is 38 this is inner diameter 41 is this outer diameter of, of the same needle we also use we also started to use the automated subretinal injection set from med one company so we can uh, uh, connect to the silicon oil injection system and with your uh, with the foot pedal, you can uh, by yourself control the injection of subretinal fluid by yourself. And these these systems have been used to uh, inject subretinally uh, the gene vectors and RTPA and as well subretinal uh, BSS. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 